We welcome you back to the Vicki Kazee Hollifield Softball Complex for game two of this doubleheader between Carson Newman and Tusculum. The Eagles prevailed in game one, seven to three. And now take aim at a home sweep of the Pioneers for a fourth time and five twin bills here at the Vic. And to do so, the Eagles will turn to a relative newcomer in the circle in Haley Leslie. Leslie getting the game two start in her first pitching outing for Carson Newman since February 18th. Two appearances on the year. She is 1-0. She got a win in relief against Christian Brothers on February 11th. A 7-0-0 ERA. She's pitched two innings, given up four hits and two runs. Opponents hitting 400 off of her with 11 batters faced this season. So we'll see how Haley Leslie fares here in this game two start. Riley Sykes, some shoulder problems. Riley Gaddis, a, a migraine. And so the Eagles turning over to Haley Leslie in the circle, the freshman from Cleveland, Tennessee, and Walker Valley High School. Otherwise, Carson Newman's defense is pretty much identical to what it was in game number one. Martin Cameron and Robbins left to right across the outfield. Matazowski, Dye, Holt, and Hughes go third to first with Warder doing the catching behind the plate for Haley Leslie. And we are under going to be underway at 2.30 p.m. If Leslie can fire this pitch in the next five seconds. And she does. So 2.30 on the dot, and the pitch is lowing in to Callan Newper for a ball to be in, begin the at-bat at 1-0. Newport, one for three with a run scored and a double in game number one. As Leslie pitches in the turf again for a ball, 2-0. and oh. Two balls and no strikes to Callan Newport. Leslie sights the sign. Here's the 2-0. Down and in. It nearly clipped Newport on the foot. Three balls and no strikes. So Haley Leslie, her first outing in the circle in nearly two months, seven weeks exactly, with some nicks and bruises to Riley Sykes and Riley Gaddis. Eagles do have Nicolette Ferguson at their disposal. Sierra Rogers threw 112 pitches in game one. Three balls, no strikes. Can Leslie find the zone against Newport? Time called by Newport. After Newport, you get Sammy Jimenez and Haley Lazo. Smeltzer, Freischmidt, Watts through the middle third of the order, then Hughes, Kavanaugh, Hodges, lower third. The pitch, down and in, ball four. So Newport starts out with a four-pitch walk. Tusklum gets its leadoff batter aboard. And the Pioneers in business with a runner on fourth first base and Callan Newport with her 20 steals on the season. First pitch to Jimenez downstairs for a ball 1-0. Five straight pitches for Haley Leslie all out of the zone. Leslie winds and delivers the 1-0. There she finds the edge of the plate for a strike, one and one. Hey. Leslie, one one. Runner on the move. Warder sees it pop out of her mitt and Newport down to second base successfully swiping her 21st bag of the season. Two and one to Jimenez. 
And Tusklum, with nobody out in the top of the first, has a runner in scoring position. Pioneers, something to keep in mind, have not split a league double header all year long. The 2 1. Down and in for ball three. Three and one to Jimenez. And Leslie in danger of issuing free passes to the first two batters. And out from the dugout comes pitching coach Sarah King to have a word with the infield. King pulls Leslie exclusively to the side to talk with her and give her some words of encouragement. Tough ask for Haley Leslie to come in and pitch. She's thrown exclusively bullpens over the last seven weeks. Third appearance of the year in her first start. She's thrown eight pitches, one of which has gone for a strike. Home plate umpire Bobby Gosnell out from behind the plate to break up this meeting. You got Gosnell behind the plate. Bob Lance is at first base. And Randy Peralt is at third. So the meeting breaks up. Haley Leslie nodding her head after some words of encouragement from Sarah King. Three and one to Jimenez with first base open after Newport stole second. The pitch. That finds the edge of the zone for a strike on Jimenez. It's three and two. Three balls, two strikes to Jimenez, who's hitting 450 this season with runners in scoring position. Freshman's driven in 32. Works with Newport with plenty of speed on second. Leslie, the payoff pitch. Bounced foul off of third. Keeps the count loaded up. Leslie. Payoff pitch to the plate. Change up. Ropes foul off of third. Count stays full on Sammy Jimenez. No score top of the first inning. Adam Cavalier, happy to have you on hand. Director for game two is Danny Wazorek. Ian Johnson's on replay. And on Campania is our camera operator along with Katie Denton. Here's the payoff pitch. Down and in, ball four. So back-to-back -back walks. Start off Haley Leslie's first career start. And there's two aboard for Haley Lazo. Some stressful early pitches for the freshman Haley Leslie out of Cleveland, Tennessee. Leslie. Wheels and deals to Lazo, who squares to bump, pulls it back. Runners were on the move, but they head back with third base covered by Hayden Dye. 1-0 and to Lazo. Lazo a one for three day in game one. Her hit was a bloop single to center field. Leslie has the sign and delivers the 1-0. Bunted. That, I thought hit the batter. Lazo, regardless, it's scooped up and thrown to first. Sacrifice works two to four and moves Newport and Jimenez into scoring position. So one away. Now batting number 20, Claire Seltzer. Two in scoring position. I really thought that it was a dead ball by the third baseman. Third base umpire, I really thought, called, hey, she was foul, fouled it off herself in the box, and that indeed is the case. So erase that, and it's a 1-1 count to Lazo. One ball and one strike to Lazo. Nobody out, and now the runners have to go back to second and first. Leslie. Lazo back in the box. Here's the 1-1. One, one. 
Bunt goes low. Warder chases everybody back to the bag. Really shocked that Newport didn't try to take third. She was nearly there with Dye covering. That was a good move by Lazlo. Lazo. She stayed put in the right-hand hitter's box, and that was going to be a tough throw for Warder to make. But everybody chased back, and it's 2-1 to Lazo. Leslie rolls the ball in her glove and brings the 2-1 to the plate. Bunted, third base side. Matazowski backhand stab, throw to first in time to get Lazo. And after all that, it's still a 5-4 put out. A sacrifice, and the two runners move into scoring position. So that's out number one. Put it back up there after all that. And really, uh, nothing different. Lazo still gets down the sacrifice bunt and has Jimenez in Newport in scoring position for Claire Smeltzer. Lefty stands in as Leslie pitches. Up and away for a ball and a 1-0 and count. One ball, no strikes, one out. Tusklum with an opportunity with runners in scoring position. Smeltzer hitless in game one. She was 0 for 3. Left fielder is hitting 358. The pitch bounces in the turf for a ball, 2 and 0. Leslie, everything going low, it feels like. 18 pitches, six for strikes. Walk the first two. Then a sacrifice bunt for Lazo to move Newport and Jimenez into scoring position. The 2 0. Swing a bouncing ball to second. Holt field. She goes home with it. Warder cannot grab it. Warder it bobbles away from her. Newport scores. Jimenez is in as well. And a fielding error by Warder behind the plate allows two runs to score. It's a fielder's choice for Smeltzer. She moves to second on the air. Jimenez scores on the air by Warder. Newport scores naturally. And it's a 2-0 lead for the Pioneers. One out and a runner in scoring position still and Smeltzer on second here in the top of the first inning. Brings up Freischmidt, who takes in the turf for a ball. Smeltzer got a great read at the pitch in the turf and she steals third. So Tusculum has scored two runs without a hit and has Smeltzer 60 feet away from a third here in the top of the first. Leslie, the 1-0. Swing and a miss. Freischmidt waves over the top of it. It's one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. Smelts are on third base. Leslie winds and delivers the 1-1. Freischmidt tags this one down the left field line, but twists foul and out of play. One and two. One ball, two strikes, one out. A pair of walks, a sacrifice, and a fielder's choice. Have the Pioneers in business. Here's the one, two. Low for a ball, two and two to Freischmidt. Leslie. Wheels and deals the 2-2. Two -two. That's popped in the air. Shallow center field. Cameron takes charge and calls off Holt to grab the pop-up and comes up ready to throw should Smeltzer decide to run. Two away. Two-nothing. Pioneers grab the early lead here in the top of the first. A pair of walks. A fielder's choice in an error, bringing the two runs, and now the catcher, Watts, comes up. 3-0-2 hitter, a pinch hitter in game one. She's 0-1. Leslie deals, swung on, hit towards short. Die charges to field and throws to first in time to get Watts. But Tusklum able to do damage thanks to the two walks. A fielder's choice in an error on the same play have staked the Pioneers to a 2-0 lead without a hit. Cameron Hughes and Bailey will try to counter 
against Ireland Cavanaugh when we get back after this on the Eagles Sports Network. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! At Aramark, this year we go back to our foundation. At Aramark, we are great food and great service with great guests. That is the Aramark way. From coffee and maples to sandwiches and Stokely, Aramark is here to produce high-quality food for you. A foundation of fresh food, a foundation of speedy service, and a foundation that's built for you now and for the future. That is the Aramark way. Two nothing. Tusculum has taken the lead after a half inning. And now, Sienna Cameron, Macy Hughes, and McCauley Bailey will go to work against the junior right-hander Ireland Cavanaugh, who's nine and seven with a 3.69 ERA, 20 appearances, 17 starts, 102 thirds innings pitched on the year, with 65 punchouts against 27 walks. Cavanaugh wheels and deals in the turf for a ball to Sienna Cameron, 1-0. Oh. The pitch. Cameron takes a strike, 1-1. One one. The pitch down and away for a ball two and one. The pitch downstairs, ball three. Three and one to start to Sienna Cameron. On base 57% of the time, she hits leadoff. Cameron, a multi hit day, two for four with a run scored in game one. Cavanaugh wheels and deals the 3-1. Cameron swings and hits it foul off of third and onto the hillside adjacent Davis Street. That loads the count at three balls and two strikes. The pitch. Cameron slashes to left center field. That's down for a base hit. Newport played it perfectly and cuts it off in the alleyway to keep Cameron to a single. Cameron stings a 3-2 pitch to left center, and the Eagles with a leadoff knock, down 2 to nothing in the bottom of the first. Brings up Macy Hughes. Two for four with three driven in in game one. Righty stays even with the plate with the outfield back in center and left. Kavanaugh pitches, Hughes squares to Bunton, shoots it foul to the backstop, nothing and one. The pitch, Hughes hacks it foul to the backstop, nothing and two, hit and run was on, and Cameron was on the move, but she'll have to retreat on the foul ball. Pitch. Hughes watches for a ball low, one and two. Kavanaugh pitches, and Hughes hacks it high into the air. Foul backing out of play off of third. Count holds the ball in two strikes. 2-0, Pioneers up, bottom of the first inning. A leadoff single for Sienna Cameron, and now Hughes at the plate. Kavanaugh sights the sign and pitches. Hughes defensively tips it foul to the backstop. 
Do it again to the ball and two strikes. One ball, two strikes on Macy Hughes. Kavanaugh brings the one two to the plate. And Hughes sends it high into the air, left side of the infield. No trouble for Hannah Hughes at short. She settles under it to get Hughes. One away for McCauley Bailey. Four plate appearances in game one, but just one at bat. She homered her first time up and then walked her final three times through the order. One for one with two driven in. Will Kavanaugh throw to her here with one out in the bottom of the first? Kavanaugh rocks and fires a change up and Bailey squares it up deep left center field alleyway. That ball leaves the yard. McCauley Bailey hammers the first pitch she gets to left center field. And the Eagles tie it 2-2 in the bottom of the first. Bailey dons the pink hat for the 12th time this season. It was a changeup, and Bailey clobbered it. The hit streak is now tied with Abby Feesinger for the fourth longest in school history. Bailey teeing off. She's homered in consecutive at-bats. Just like that, it's a 2-2 ball game. And up comes Brooke Matazowski. Kavanaugh pitches to her. And Matazowski takes a strike splitting the dish, nothing in one. So McCauley Bailey hits in 18 straight games. They all won. Matazowski pops it high in the air, shallow center field. The second baseman, Hodges, calls off the center fielder Newport and the right fielder McBride and makes the grab in the right center field alleyway to get Matazowski two away. Talking about Bailey. 18-game hit streak. That's tied Fee Abby Feesinger in 2017 for the fourth longest hitting streak in school history. Also tied for the longest hitting streak in school history by a freshman. Third longest is Kelly Hensley. She did it in 19 straight games as Warder fouls off the first pitch into the catcher's mitt, nothing in one. Hensley did it in 19 straight games in 2014. And you got Angel Bales at 25, the pitch outside for a ball, at one and one. This is going deep into the memory banks here. I believe that was in the 96-97 seasons. School record, Sammy Hatcher Chafin, the Hall of Famer. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Inside for a ball, 2-1. 33 straight games in 1992. So a ways to go for Bailey to catch Sammy Hatcher Chafin. But hit successfully in 18 straight. None too shabby. Here's the 2-1. Warder pops it up, first base side, fouling out of play, two and two. Warder, the only Eagle who was hitless in game one. She was 0 for 4 at the plate. Sophomore catcher hitting 340 oh, no, this season. My glove. It's right next to you. <laughs> and the outfield back on her. her. That's been Tusculum's strategy throughout this game. Leave center field and left deep. Warder squares this one up, foul off the facing of the Tusculum dugout, two and two. Two runs off of two hits for the Eagles. Cameron led off with a single to left center, then Bailey goes yard to left center. 12 not bombs on the year for Bailey. She's up to 56 driven in for the season. The 2-2 to order. Off the plate away for ball three. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Bases empty, bottom of the first in a 2-2 ball game. Kavanaugh, the 3-2. Warder stings. It was bobbled by Jimenez. She tossed it in the air and then 
caught it back at her waist to get Warder. And that's the inning. But Bailey's big blast does the deal. 2-2 ball game after one. Hughes, Cavanaugh, Hodges. Lower third of the order due up for the Pioneers when we get back after these messages on the Eagle Sports Network. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never-frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa's cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From foot-long hot dogs to juicy steaks, Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. What is it that makes you powerful? It's not only having a voice, but knowing that it's heard loud and clear. We understand knowledge can change your life and that energy will continue to power it. And because you're part of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we're always listening. Because you're more than just a customer. You're a member. And what's more powerful than that? AEC, bringing the winning game plan to your team. Two-two ball game as we come to the top of the second inning. Hughes, Kavanaugh, and Hodges set to go to work against Haley Leslie, who has made her third career appearance today. And the freshman back to work in the circle gave up two runs, one of them earned in the first, after walking the first two batters of the game. And in stands Hughes. Leslie's first pitch is laced off the glove of Matizowski at third. It rolls into left. A leadoff single for Hughes. First batter aboard for the Pioneers, and it brings up the pitcher, Ireland Cavanaugh. Leadoff batter aboard for Kavanaugh to work with, who has one hit and 13 trips to the plate this season, trying to help out her own cause. She takes high for a ball to begin the at-bat 1-0. and Hughes, she's done some work on the base paths this season, three stolen bases and as many attempts. First base, she's clad in all black with black numerals trimmed in white. Leslie, the 1-0. Bunt squared, pitch shoots high for ball two. 28 pitches now for Haley Leslie. 12 have found the zone. The pitch. Downstairs, ball three. You know, Leslie deals in there for a strike, three and one. Three balls and a strike to Kavanaugh. Looking for her first hit of the season with runners on base. Whitey stays back of the plate. Leslie from the third base side of the rubber pitches the three one. Swing and a miss. Kavanaugh waves over the top of it. It's three and two. Three balls and two strikes. Leslie has battled back to load the count. 2-2 ball game, top of the second. Leslie, the payoff pitch. Dealt inside for ball four. Third walk of the day for Haley Leslie. And for a second consecutive inning, the Pioneers get their first two to reach without an out. Single and a walk, and Leslie batten down the hatches against... Caitlin Hodges. Hodges, one of three players for Julie Hubner to start all 43 games this season for the Pioneers. Second baseman's hitting 228 as Leslie deals a changeup that's bunted up the f- third baseline. Matazowski bobbles, and Hodges is safe. I think Hodges was going to be there anyway. It's a bunt single to third base. 
And the bases are loaded for the Pioneers. Matazowski mishandled initially, but that was going to be a tough play at first. And Hodges will get the punt single. And that is the end of the line for Haley Leslie. And so Carson Newman will bring in Riley Gaddis to pitch with the bases loaded and nobody out in the top of the second. More on her when we get back to the Vic after these messages on the Eagle Sports Network. Domino's Pizza in Jefferson City and Morristown wants to help feed your business. When you're hungry at lunch, show your business card at Domino's in Jefferson City and Morristown when you make your purchase for pickup or delivery to get 25% off the entire order. That's 25% off your order at Domino's in Jeff City and Morristown when you show your business card. Call 865-471-6700 to get a pizza. Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Bases loaded, nobody out for Riley Gaddis to come into. And Gaddis on in relief of Haley Leslie. She was a game time decision today. Dealing with migraines. And she's on in relief for the first time this season. Bases loaded, nobody out, and she deals to Newport, who takes outside for a ball 1-0. Gaddis, 9-4 with a 4-3-2 ERA this season. 82 and two-thirds innings of work. An opponent sitting 291 off of her. Bases loaded, nobody out in the pitch. Hit foul back and out of play. It's 1-1 one one to Newport. One ball, one strike. Nobody out. Hughes single to left to lead things off. Cavanaugh walked and then Hodges... A bunt single to third base before the change is made. Gaddis gets the sign from Warder. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Upstairs for ball two. Two balls and a strike to Newport, who walked and scored a run her first time through. Bases loaded, nobody out. 2-2 two -two ball game, top of the second. Big spot here for the Pioneers to do some massive damage. Infield playing in for the Eagles. The 2-1. Swing and a miss. Newport. Fool on the breaking pitch. 2-2. Two two. two balls and two strikes. Gaddis. Gets the side from Warder. Pulls the ball against her right hip. And time is called by Newport. Gaddis took a smidge too long to deliver that pitch to, for Newport's liking, and she calls for time. Newport one for three for the doubleheader. She's been aboard twice, once via a walk and once on a double. The 2-2 pitch is a changeup. Newport lunges at it and fouls it onto the roof of the press box here on the first base side. Keeps the count at two and two. Martin is playing deep in left. Cameron... Straight away in center. Robin straight away in right. Gaddis. The 2-2. Swing and a foul tipped back and out of play. That was ball three. But Newport offered at it. They keep the count even at 2-2. Two 2-2 two. Two -two ball game. Top of the second inning. Two and two. Gaddis pitches. A changeup. That's stroked on a Davis streak. Newport stays alive at two and two. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah. 
Gaddis, the pitch. Hit in the air, down the left field line, twisting foul, and out of play. On to the hillside adjacent Davis Street. Count holds it two and two. If you're hearing random cheers here and there, it's because Carson Newman Tennis, both the men and the women in action behind us, at a Buddy Catlett Tennis Complex against Mars Hill. Two and two. Gaddis brings the break-even pitch to the plate. Up and away for ball three. Ninth pitch of the bat there to Newport. Nowhere to put her. Base is loaded, nobody out. Hughes on third, Kavanaugh on second, Hodges on first. Gaddis, the payoff pitch. Laced foul onto the hillside of Davis Street. Keeps the count loaded up. 11th pitch of the at-bat coming up. A battle here with the conference's leader in doubles. Newport has 17 of them. Driven in 13 runs. Bases loaded, nobody out. The 3-2 is a changeup up and away for ball four. On the 11th pitch of the at-bat, Gaddis loses Newport and walks in the go-ahead run. 3-2, Pioneers retake the lead in the top of the second. Gaddis couldn't get Newport to chase. And she gives her the base on balls after 11 pitches. Still nobody out. Still bases loaded. A 3-2 lead for the Pioneers now in the top of the second. And Jimenez to the plate. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it off to the right. Nothing in one. So you go single, walk, bunt single, walk. And Tusculum has a 3-2 lead as a result. Still nobody out. The pitch. Tipped foul, and it's 0-2. No balls and two strikes to Jimenez. Nobody out. Kavanaugh on third, Hodges on second, Newport on first. Tusklum threatening. You're in the top of the second. The 0-2. Gaddis gets Jimenez to swing and miss. Strikeout number 37 of the season for Riley Gaddis and a well-timed punch out. Puts the first out on the board and brings up the first baseman, Haley Lazo. Lazo, a sacrifice bunt her first time through. Bases loaded, one out. Gaddis deals to her. And Lazo takes low for a ball, it's 1-0. Three runs off of two hits for the Pioneers. No errors and one left. Two runs off of two hits, an error, and none left for the Eagles. Gaddis, the 1-0. This is outside for ball two. Haley Leslie got her first career start for Carson Newman. Win an inning, gave up two hits, three runs so far, three walks. She's responsible for two of the three on base. Swinging a bouncing ball, hit foul off of third. Julie Hubner hops out of the way of that one. And it's two and one. Well, Carson Newman would no doubt be thrilled if they could limit the damage to just a run here in the top of the second. Gaddis, 2-1 pitch. There's a changeup outside for ball three. Tusculum has scored its runs. The, uh, a fielder's choice, an error, and a bases loaded walk. A 3-2 lead for the Pioneers with one across already here in the top of the second. 3-1 the pitch. Taken inside, ball four. Second bases loaded, loaded walk of the inning for Riley Gaddis, and the Pioneers extend the lead to four to two. Hodges, the last batter that 
Haley Leslie is responsible for. Since Gaddis has entered, you've had a bases loaded walk, a strikeout, and now a bases loaded walk. Still juiced, one out. 4-2, Pioneers leading. First pitch, swung on, grounded to Holt at second. She goes to die at second and trades the out for the run. Lazo retired. Smeltzer reaches on the fielder's choice. Lazo's put away 6-4. to four. Newport to third. And Hodges scores standing. So a three-run top of the second for Tusculum has extended the lead to 5-2. to two. And it brings up the designated player, Chloe Freischmidt. Two out, two on. Runners on the corners. A 5-2 ball game as Gaddis pitches. Freischmidt pops it up. Third base side. It's staying in fair territory. And Matazowski overruns it a bit. It lands for strike one. Probably should have been the final out of the inning, but a tough judgment for Matazowski right against the Tusculum on deck circle in the fence. Nothing in one. Gaddis pitches. A change up buckles the outside edge for strike two. Nothing in two. Bases loaded, nobody out, and Tusculum has grabbed a 5 2 lead with a pair of bases loaded walks and an RBI fielder's choice for Claire Smeltzer. Two away now and runners on the corners. Eagles down 5-2, to two. the 0-2. Swing a ground ball, hit into the hole at short. Die fields, throws to first, it pulls Hughes off the bag, and everybody's safe. Newport scores at 6-2. to two. That was a hard hit shot. Die had to dive, got to her feet, and her throw pulls Hughes off the bag. Make the adjudication hit or error here in a moment. Brings up Watts. Gaddis pitches. Off the plate, away for a ball. It's 1-0. and one and oh officially rule it a throwing error on Hayden Dye the 1-0 swing a line drive hit past Matazowski at third it rolls down the left field line Martin throwing home Warder has it and applies the tag hitting over Abby Martin with the seed from left field finishes off the inning but not before Tusculum does damage. Pioneers score four runs off of three hits and an error in the inning, leaving two on base. 6-2, Tusculum leads it. Eagles with their work cut out for them, headed to the bottom of the second with Die, Holt, and Martin for the plate. After this, on the Eagle Sports Network. I get my power from my co-op so I can put my energy into my family. Into waking up the neighborhood. Latte for Christine. I get my power from the co-op so I can put my energy into planting seeds for a brighter future. Touchstone Energy Cooperatives power to your community for your community so your energy can go into the things that matter most to you. My 69 Camaro. Who powers you? AEC, the right call for your energy needs. Let us help you score success. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never-frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa's cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From footlong hot dogs to juicy steaks, Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. 6-2, Tusculum has grabbed the lead after a four-run second inning. Two bases loaded walks, a fielder's choice, and a throwing error. Bring in the four runs for the Pioneers. Now Hayden Dye, Carmen Holt, and Abby Martin will have to play from behind against Kavanaugh, and Dye hammers the first pitch she gets foul and on the Davis Street. 
It's all the way down the hillside. Nothing in one. Pitch, die, golf, sits it in the air, deep right field, back to the warning track, floats McBride, and she settles under it to retire die. Two pitches and an out for Ireland Cavanaugh. And there's one away in the bottom of the second with the Eagles trailing 6-2. to two. Since Carmen Holt to the plate, she tripled in a run in game number one. Holt swings at the first pitch, lifts it deep to left field, back to the wall, goes Smeltzer. She reaches up at the warning track and retires Carmen Holt. Well, any other field in the region outside of North Georgia and the Vic, that's a home run. But here where it's 2.15 to left, Carmen Holt has a fly ball out. Well played by Smeltzer at the warning track. Quickly two away for Abby Martin. Kavanaugh steps off the rubber. The pitch down for Martin, 1 0. Pitch on the outside edge for a strike. One and one to Abby Martin. 6-2, Tusculum leading. Bottom of the second inning. Six runs off of just three hits for the Pioneers. A 1-1. Martin pops it up first base side. Lazo stays against the fencing. And the second baseman makes the grab to retire Martin. In foul territory. Kavanaugh faces the minimum. Tuscal tries to play add on. 6 2 leaders headed to the top of the third after this on the Eagle Sports Network. We select our insurance companies the same way you do, very carefully. When you work with us, you can count on receiving fast, courteous, and professional service and quality protection through auto owner's insurance. For a no-problem approach for your life, home, car, and business insurance needs, ask us about the no-problem company, Auto Owner's Insurance. Call Bible Insurance Agency at 423-586-4320 or go by 1600 East Andrew Johnson Highway in Morristown. Serving the Lakeway area's insurance needs, since 1931. At InterDigital, we strive to be a leading provider of cutting-edge digital and marketing solutions. At InterDigital, we want to help our clients find success. Our team of technology gurus work together to ensure InterDigital continues to progress forward as technology advances. At InterDigital, we make technology work for you. Visit InterDigital.com for IT support, web development, virtual tours, graphic design, internet marketing, mobile app, and film production services. InterDigital, laser-focused on your success. Sierra Rogers is back to work in the circle for Carson Newman to start off the home half of the or the road half of the third inning against Hannah Hughes and her first pitch is in there for a ball swing and a miss at the second and it's one and one. Rogers dealt the complete game in inning one seven hits or seven innings four hits three runs all earned with ten strikeouts. She inherits a four run deficit the one one. Check swing foul. One and two to Hughes. Hughes is single and a run scored already. As Hughes is pointing to her right wrist saying, hey, it hit my forearm. And Julie Hudner out from the third base coaching box to say something to home plate umpire Bobby Gosno.
6-2 Pioneers leading. 1-2 and two to Hughes. Rogers sights the sign and pitches. It's hit foul to the backstop. 1-2. and two. Well, you can close the book on Carson Newman's first two pitchers. Haley Leslie in inning gives up two hits, five runs, four earned with three walks. Faced nine batters. Gaddis an inning, a hit, a run. It wasn't earned. Two walks, a strikeout. Faced six batters. The one, two. Swing and a miss and a pitch down. And Hughes is down on strikes. One up, one down. Here in the top of the third inning. Sends Kavanaugh to the plate. Rogers deals to her, and Kavanaugh takes away for a ball. 1 0. Kavanaugh, a walk and a run scored her first time through. 6 2. Tusculum leading. Rogers pitches. And Kavanaugh takes up and in for ball two, 2 0. Third pitcher of the day. For Carson Newman, Leslie an inning, Gaddis an inning, and now Rogers on in relief. The pitch. Swing a bouncing ball to short. Die fields at her ankles. An on-target throw to first puts away Kavanaugh. Six to three. Two up, two down, and up comes Hodges. Warm work for Hayden Die in the hole at short. Hodges. A bunt single, her first time up and a run scored. Rogers deals. Downstairs for a ball to begin the at-bat, 1-0. 6-2, Tusculum leading, base is empty. Two out, top of the third inning. Pioneers stake to a 6-2 lead. Six runs scored off of three hits. 1-0. Hine outside for a ball, 2-0. And, and the way that Tusculum has scored has been Hair pulling for head coach Michael Graves. Scored a run on an RBI fielder's choice for Smeltzer, the 2-0. Popped into the air, first base side. It's in foul ground. Carmen Holt and Macy Hughes collide, and that drops for strike one. So a defensive miscue there for Carson Newman. Macy Hughes had that one all the way, but Carmen Holt rolled her through, trying to grab it. And probably should be the inning as Holt overran it and then couldn't get her glove on the ball. 2-1, Rogers pitches. Downstairs for ball three. Again, talking about the way that Tusculum scored. You had the Smeltzer RBI fielder's choice. Carmen Holt came home to try to get the go-ahead run. It was muffed by Warder behind the plate, and that allowed two runs to score on the play. Second run was earned. Here's the 3 1. Downstairs, ball four. So after Hodges probably should have fouled out, she walks, and the lineup turns back to the top of the order for Newport, who has yet to register an official at bat today. She's walked twice, scored two runs, and driven in a run with her second walk, which was a bases loaded base on balls. Rogers wheels and deals to her. Newport swings and misses for strike one. And you've heard me mention bases loaded walk for Newport. That's how Tusculum's third run scored. Fourth run scored on a bases loaded walk. You get an RBI fielder's choice for Smeltzer. And then an E6 brings in the sixth run for Tusculum. The 0-1. Swing and a miss, nothing in two. So Tusculum has scored six runs, and all six of those runs were produced without a hit being recorded. Or it wasn't a hit that brought in the run. Fielder's choice, an error, walk, walk, fielder's choice, error. The pitch, runner on the move, pitch out of the zone. Die grabs it, trucks Hodges, and tags her out. The throw pulled die to the first base side of the second base bag, and it pulled her right into the path of Hodges. She tags her out and is caught stealing to end the frame. A 
Hayden Dye levels Hodges, and that's the inning. Pioneers kept off the scoreboard for the first time today. Robbins Cameron Hughes will try to get it rolling for Carson Newman. Down four runs after this on the Eagle Sports Network. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at Trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! We come to the bottom of the third inning. And Carson Newman trails Tusculum 6-2. to two. Mary Vandergriff pinch hitting for the Eagles to lead off the frame. 286 hitter as Kavanaugh pitches and Vandergriff stings it foul off the third. Nothing in one. Vandergriff didn't get the start in game number one. First time she's been out of the starting lineup since game two against Limestone on March 7th. Change here in the night cap. The 1 High and outside for a ball. One and one to Vandergriff. Vandergriff trying to work her way through a little bit of a slump, or out of a slump. She had hit successfully in five straight games and six out of seven on March 18th. Change up low from Cavanaugh. Two and one to Vandergriff. And since that, she has one hit in her last 16 trips to the plate. That was at Wingate on April 2nd. The pitch, Vandergriff slams foul off the facing of Tusculum's dugout, two and two. So Vandergriff trying to find the lumber. Hitting 338 after that. Stretch of seven games where she hit successfully in six of them. Our average sitting 286. The 2 2. Vandergriff will bounce it left side of the circle. Charging is the shortstop. Hughes throws on the run to first and beats Vandergriff by a half step to the bag. Six straight retired by Ireland Cavanaugh after she gave up the one out home run to Macaulay Bailey in the first. Brings up Sienna Cameron. She's got one of the two hits on the day for Carson Newman. As Cavanaugh winds and delivers to her, and Cameron takes up and in for a ball, 1 0. Oh. Carson Newman and Tusculum split a doubleheader last season over at Red Edmonds Field in Greenville. Here's the 1 0. Oh. High for a ball, 2 0 oh to Cameron. Eagles won game one nine to five before falling in the night cap six to one. It was a four run second that proved the difference in that one for the Pioneers. The pitch in there for a strike, two and one. I also credit Ireland Cavanaugh. She was the winning pitcher in that night cap. Went the complete game, gave up three hits and one run. It was unearned. Walked one and struck out four. Did a nice job keeping Karstum off balance last year. Two one. Dances low for ball three to Cameron. Three balls and a strike. Uh, has felt like against Carson Newman this season. No lead has been safe, but no deficit has been safe either. The three one. On the outside edge for a strike, three and two. Eagles have the largest come from behind effort in school history to their credit this season. Rallied from six runs down against Catawba to win 10-9, the 3-2. Cameron laces it foul off of Tusculum's dugout. Count stays full. And then against Newberry, they were 
in danger of being run ruled. Down 11 to 2 after the top of the fourth. Rallied with 10 on answer to take a 12 11 lead, only to lose 13 to 12 in the top of the seventh to the Wolves. The 3 2. Cameron Tardy swings and misses, and Kavanaugh dials up her 66th strikeout of the season. She's retired seven consecutively. Well, there's two out in the bottom of the third. Brings up Macy Hughes. And Carson Newman hasn't swept a doubleheader since March 16th. That was at UVA Wise. They've been splits or sweeps ever since. Hughes pops up the first pitch she gets. It's back behind home plate. The catcher, Watts, had a decent beat on it, but overran it, and it lands for strike one. Well, you can give an error on a dropped foul ball, and we've had no none of those errors today, but a lot of plays like that where that probably should be the out in the inning over. And the Eagles extend it. Nothing in one. And Hughes calls for time. Hughes, a sky-high pop-up to short her first time through. Two for five for the twin bill. 388 hitter stands in as Kavanaugh pitches. Upstairs and away, ball one to Hughes, one and one. Sunny skies, wind blowing left to right across the outfield. Rare to see a cross breeze. Normally the wind's gusting out to left or to center at this park. The one, one. Hughes swings, line drive, left center field. One hops the wall. Hughes charging around first as the throw comes in from Smeltzer to the second baseman, Hodges. Hughes has a two-out stand-up double to left. And the line of seven straight retired by Ireland Kavanaugh comes to a close with Macy Hughes. Two out, two base hit. That brings up Macaulay Bailey. Julie Hubner is out from the dugout to have a word with Ireland Kavanaugh. Well, with first base open, you just put her there. You hear a laugh coming from Carson Newman's dugout. I think that's because of where Tusculum's outfield is positioning itself. Alan Newport, the center fielder, might as well have her back to the outfield wall with where the Tusculum outfield is setting up shop. 6-2, Pioneers leading bottom of the third inning. A two-out double for Macy Hughes. Can McCauley Bailey keep the line moving? She's reached base in six consecutive, pardon me, five consecutive plate appearances here in the twin bill. Two home runs, three walks. And the first pitch to Bailey is in the left-hand hitter's box. Won't go down as an intentional walk. But I'd be shocked if Kavanaugh gives her anything here. That's way up and away. She nearly chucked it over Watt's head. 2-0 to Bailey. Macaulay Bailey. Here's the 2-0. Outside ball three. Kind of think she's lucky to keep the hitting streak going. Purely because the pitches she's seen, she just hasn't had a ton to, that have been hittable. That's over the glove of Watts. And the intentional walk and wild pitch lets Hughes take third. Or the old unintentional intentional walk. Runners on the corners for Brooke Matazowski. Two out. Bottom three. Matazowski's 0 for 1. As Kavanaugh pitches. And Matazowski watches a strike on the outer half. Nothing in one. 48 pitches for Ireland Kavanaugh. 30 have been for strikes. The pitch popped up by Matazowski. Right side of the field. The second baseman, Hodges, takes charge, and she gets Matazowski to finish the frame. So a two-out double, a walk and a wild pitch, and the Eagles leave two in on the corners in the bottom of the third. Carson Newman trails 6-2 after three. 
We're back after these messages here on the Eagle Sports Network. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at Trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! Newport, Jimenez, and Lazo. Scheduled to appear for Tusculum here in the top of the fourth inning. Pioneers stake to a 6-2 lead as Rogers back in to work in relief in the circle and she deals low to Newport 1-0. Newport was at the plate when Hodges was caught stealing in the last inning. Yet to register an official at bat here in the nightcap, the 1-0. Swing and a miss. Newport out in front. One and one. She's walked twice. And the second walk came with the bases loaded and drove in a run. The pitch. Bunted foul off of home plate. One and two. One ball, two strikes to the leadoff batter, Newport. Hitting 4.58 when she leads off innings. Pioneers up 6-2 to two on the Eagles. You're in the top of the fourth. Two run first, four run second for Tusculum. Here's the one-two. Burns the turf for ball two. All six runs that have scored for Tusculum today. None of them were produced with a hit. Two errors, the 2-2. Swing a line drive to left. Martin playing back has to race forward and she lays out to retire Newport. One away. Newport hit it hard. If Martin's at normal depth, she doesn't have to move at all, but she was on the warning track to play that one. And had to race forward and dive forward head first to get Newport. One away for Sammy Jimenez. Talking about how Tusculum has scored its runs. Two runs have scored on errors. Two runs have scored on fielder's choices. And two runs have scored on bases loaded walks. Jimenez takes up for a ball, 1-0. She's 0-for-1 in the nightcap. Walk and a strikeout. Carson Newman pitching in the nightcap, the 1-0. Burns the turf for a ball, 2-0. Carson Newman pitching here in the nightcap has walked six. And of those six players to walk, five, no, pardon me, four have come around to score. 2-0. Line drive into right. Vandergriff has to stay back. Fields and throws in. It's over the head of Macy Hughes, but Warder backed it up well. And it's a one-out single for Jimenez into right. Fourth hit of the day for the Pioneers. And the line moves along to Haley Lazo. She hasn't registered an official at-bat here in the nightcap. A walk to drive in a run and a sacrifice. One out, one on, pitches in the turf and gets away from Kennedy Warder. The wild pitch moves Jimenez over to second base. 
The Pioneers have a runner in scoring position now. One out, top of the fourth. 6-2, Tusculum leads Carson Newman. Rogers, the 1-0 pitch. Swing a bouncing ball to short. Deep in the hole, Die boots it. Jimenez doesn't move. Die was looking up at her when the ball got into her glove. And Lazo legs it out. That was going to be a real tough and long throw for Die to make. But she gets that in her glove clean. It's an out. So an E6 on Hayden Die. One out, two on for Claire Schmelzer. She's 0 for 2 today. As Rogers pits it, pitches, Smeltzer bounces it back up the box. Base hit. Stop sign held up for Jimenez as Cameron gets it in center field. It's a single up the middle for Smeltzer and one out. And the bases are loaded for the Pioneers. Bounding ball back up the box. Holt couldn't knock it down. Granted, she's probably not recording it out if she does get it in her glove at second. Instead, a pioneer on every bag. Jimenez, Lazo, and Smeltzer for Freischmidt. Rogers pitches. Downstairs for a ball, 1-0. Newport lined out to lead off the inning. Single, wild pitch, E6, single to load them up with one out for Tusculum. Pioneers threatening here in the top of the fourth to blow the barn doors off. 1-0 from Rogers. That's on the inner half of the handles for a strike, one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. Three errors for Carson Newman. Two of them at short. One behind the plate, the 1-1. One, one. Hit foul back and out of play, one and two. One ball, two strikes, one out. Jimenez on third, Lazo on second, Smeltzer on first for Tusculum. Leading six to two in the top of the fourth. Rogers, here's the one-two. Bounces in the turf, border blocks it, and it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and an out. Now Sierra Rogers, 112 pitches in game one. She's up to 31 here in the nightcap. What kind of gas does she have? 2-2. Two -two. That burns the turf. Gets away from Warder. And racing home to score is Jimenez. So she comes in on the wild pitch. Everybody moves up a base. And it's a 7-2 lead for Tusculum. And a 3-2 count for Freischmidt. Rogers wheels and deals. Laced foul off of the Tusculum dugout. Keeps the count full at 3-2. Sierra Rogers. 147 pitches at Wingate between the two games of the doubleheader on April 2nd. She's at 145 right now. Three two. Hit foul back and out of play. Count holds it. Three balls and two strikes with the eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. And that 147 pitch day at Wingate is pretty much the the top mark for Rodgers. Just the third time this season she's pitched in two games on the same day. Take that back. Fourth time this season she's done that. Here's the 3-2. Freischmidt fouls it off again. Do it again at three balls and two strikes. First base open with Lazo on third and Smeltzer on second. She pitched against both U Indy and Shorter on February 12th. But only threw four pitches in relief against UND. Pitched against Catawba twice on March 11th and Wingate on April 2nd. The payoff pitch popped up third base side and into Tusculum's dugout. So Freischmidt stays alive. 
at three balls and two strikes. And a tenth pitch of the at-bat still to come. Pioneers load the bases with one out with a single, an error, and another single. And a run comes across on a wild pitch. Three and two. Rogers deals. Line drive, left center field. That's extra bases for Freischmidt. Lazo is in, as is Smeltzer. Throw cut out, comes in from Martin in left center, but not before a two-out double to the wall from Freischmidt makes it a 9-2 lead for the Pioneers. Pioneers have struck for three here in the top of the fourth. And the line continues to move for Watts. Watts is one for two as Rogers pitches. And Watts takes inside for a ball, one and oh. Watts ground out to short and a single to left. Pioneers up seven runs here in the top of the fourth. Rogers deals. Swing and a miss. Watts tardy. It's one and one. Nine runs off of six hits for Tusculum. Two runs off of three hits and three errors for the Eagles. Rogers. The one one. Swing and a miss. Watts late. And it's one and two. Pioneers with three runs off of three hits in the inning. And an error. Freischmidt's double that scored two. The first run-producing hit that Tusculum has had in the game. One-two. Outside for ball two. It's two and two. The 2 2. Down and in for a ball, three and two. Three balls, two strikes, one out. Freischmidt on second. Rogers, the payoff pitch. Bouncing ball to short. Die looks off the lead runner, Freischmidt, and throws to first to get Watt six to three, and there's two away. Inning should be over now. But remember, Lazo reached on an error, the third batter up in the inning. So two out. Inning extended because of the error. And Hughes to the plate. Rogers pitches, and Hughes swings, lines it into left. Martin Fields throws home, and that chases Freischmidt back to the bag. Hubner waved her initially, but Martin got that one into her glove quickly and put a perfect throw to the plate to Warder to chase Freischmidt back. Keeps Hughes to a single, keeps Freischmidt at third, and the eighth player in the inning comes up in the pitcher, Kavanaugh, trying to help out her own cause. The pitch. Down and in for a ball to Kavanaugh, 1-0. She's walked, scored a run, and grounded out to short. 0 for 1 officially on the day. Two outs, runners on the corners for the Pioneers. Kavanaugh looking to extend the inning, the 1-0. Check swing foul, 1-1. One one. Kavanaugh looking for her first hit of the season with runners on base or with two out. Pioneers are 5 for 13 as a team with runners in scoring position. Eagles have had to deal with a ton, and I do mean a ton of traffic, thanks to six walks and two errors. So eight free base runners for the Pioneers, and they've taken advantage to the tune of a 9-2 lead. Here's the 1-1. Right down Broadway for a strike. It's 1-2. One, one ball. Two strikes, two out. A 
Runners on the corners and Freischmidt and Hughes. Rogers, the one, two. Pitch was up, popped up, third base side, foul, and Matizowski can't get to it. It lands and keeps the at-bat going for Ireland Cavanaugh. Nine, two, Pioneers leading. Rogers. Rolls the ball against her right hip and brings the one-two plateward. Eye outside for a ball, two and two to Cavanaugh. Pitch 50 of this relief effort coming up for Sierra Rogers. One and two-thirds innings of work. It was given up four hits and three runs, two earned. The break-even pitch burns the turf for ball three, and that loads the count on Kavanaugh. Second pace open, but you don't want to lose the 071 hitter who has one hit on the season in 14 trips to the plate. The payoff pitch hit foul back and out of play. Do it again at three balls and two strikes. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. 9-2, Tusculum has built a big lead. Thanks to oodles of free bases. Six walks and two errors, giving the Pioneers lots of base runners. The payoff pitch to the plate. Kavanaugh loops it foul into the Tusculum dugout. And she lives to see a ninth pitch of this at-bat. Three runs across in the inning for the Pioneers off of four hits. A wild pitch and a two-run double from Chloe Freischmidt have done the damage. The pitch pop up behind home plate. Warder chases it and cannot glove it against the padding. Warder had to reach back and couldn't get it in her glove. Charge Warder with an error for the drop foul ball. The 3-2 is hit foul to the backstop. Do it again at three balls and two strikes. Fourth error of the day for Carson Newman on the dropped foul ball. Rogers back aboard the slab. The payoff pitch. Down and in for ball four. Inning extends on the walk to Kavanaugh. Bases loaded, two out. And Hodges will try to keep the line moving as Michael Graves is out from the dugout to have a chat with the infield. Inning should be over. You hear from Carson Newman's dugout, Nico, are you ready? And one would presume that Nicolette Ferguson may be set to make an appearance in relief. Well, Sierra Rogers has done what's been asked of her. Got the win with 10 strikeouts in game one, but now after a 112 pitch day to start things off, 176 pitches between the two games after 64 in relief. The first pitch is downstairs to Hodges for a ball, 1-0. Hodges a single and a walk, been aboard twice. Freischmidt on third, Hughes on second, Kavanaugh on first. Two outs, inning should be over. The 1-0, loop to left. Martin twisted around, but she squares it up and makes the grab toward the left field line to grab Hughes and finish the frame. But for the second time today, the Pioneers send nine to the plate. 
They score three times off of four hits and leave the bases loaded. Eagles trail by seven runs, nine to two. Ward or die and Holt to the plate. We'll get back after this on the Eagles Sports Network. How do you show your support for Carson Newman? Head over to ShopSeenEagles.com right now where they have all of your needs covered. From clothing to outfitting your tailgate party, whether you're hunting, fishing, or on the golf course, ShopSeenEagles.com is the place for you. All of your everyday essentials from pens to phone chargers are in one place. For the best gear in the business, visit ShopSeenEagles.com today. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. 9-2, Tusculum leads Carson Newman as we come to the bottom of the fourth inning. And if the Eagles are to come from behind in this one, it'll take the largest comeback in school history. And against a pitcher in Ireland, Kavanaugh, who has kept the Eagles at bay for back-to-back -back performances. Warder fouls the first pitch back to the left and out of play. Nothing at one. Warder is hitless for the doubleheader. 0 for 5 for the twin bill. Carson Newman one game, one of this doubleheader. 7 to 3. A comfortable performance. The pitch. Warder stings down the left field line. That's a base hit. Smelter was playing back. Warder wants two bases, and she takes it as the throw comes into the second baseman, Hodges. Warder, good aggressive base running. Ambles around for her seventh double of the season. And the Eagles have a leadoff base runner on for the second time today. Brings up Hayden Dye, who flied out to right her first time up. Pitch downstairs to die, and it's 1-0. One, oh. one ball. No strikes to Hayden Dye. Kavanaugh pitches, and Dye takes a strike on the inner half, 1-1. One and one. Ireland Kavanaugh in her last two appearances against Carson Newman, here's the 1-1. Die cranks it down the left field line, but it's turning foul and drops her strike two. Arlen Cavanaugh, her last two appearances against Carson Newman, 10 innings of work, has given up five hits and three runs, two of those earned, with five strikeouts and two walks. But she has kept... Carson Newman off balance. Just seven hits allowed in her last ten innings of work against the Eagles. The one-two. Popped up first base side and dropping between the first baseman Lazo, the second baseman Hodges, and the right fielder McBride in foul ground. Die keeps the at-bat going at a ball and two strikes. 9-2, Tusculum leading here under sunny skies at the Vic. This is a much-needed result for the Pioneers. Not a lot of scoreboard watching to do. These are the only league games between two league schools in action today. The one-two change up. Die loops to left, but it's right at the left fielder. Smeltzer playing back. And Die retired on a line out for out number one. So Warder stuck at second after the leadoff double. And up comes Carmen Holt, robbed of a home run by Smeltzer. Her first time up. Smeltzer continues to play back in left field. 
as Kavanaugh pitches and Holt takes for a strike on the outer half, nothing in one. These games, absolutely crucial. For Carson Newman, Eagles need a win to stay just a game behind LR and LMU as Holt pops it up. It's on to the outfield green turf, and the shortstop Hughes settles under it to put away Holt in left center field, shallow left center field. And there's two away for Abby Martin. A loss for Carson Newman means the Eagles are into a three-way tie with Newberry and Emory and Henry in fourth place. The pitch downstairs to Martin, 1-0. Meanwhile, a win for Tusculum means that they are a game back of Anderson for the final spot in the league tournament. The pitch upstairs to Martin, 2-0. And Tusculum, if they can just tie Anderson in the league standings, they've got the tiebreaker because they swept the Trojans. So these are some pretty meaningful game. This is a pretty meaningful game here, the 2-0. Martin takes for a strike on the outer half, 2-1. and one. Additionally, for Carson Newman, you're getting close to the region rankings coming out. Eagles with nine losses on the season. None of those nine losses have been to a team with a losing record, the 2-1. Martin pops it up, first base side. Lazo in foul ground, looks it into her mitt, and gets Martin. So the Eagles unable to do anything with the leadoff double for Kennedy Warder. And through four, the Pioneers carry a 9-2 lead. Tusculum needs one run more to have a chance to end it via the run rule. Top of the order, Newport Jimenez and Lazo to the plate for Tusculum. We get back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. Dorm food got you down? Need a home-cooked meal? then Lisa's Country Kitchen is for you. Lisa's Country Kitchen has been feeding Carson Newman students for 15 years. Lisa's has a family-friendly atmosphere all day long, from the morning with her $2.99 breakfast specials to dinner with Lisa's fresh, never-frozen steaks. Carson Newman students get a 10% discount with their student ID. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. Sierra Rogers heads back to the circle for Carson Newman as the Eagles trail Tusculum 9-2 as we come to the top of the fifth inning. Pioneers came into this game hoping on the road to get at least one. Two would be an absolute dream for Julie Huebner's group. The Pioneers in line to collect their first League split of the season. Tusculum, a team that has swept teams three times and been swept six times. They're into the driver's seat, 9-2 at the top of the fifth as Newport leads off, swinging and missing from the first pitch at the first pitch from Sierra Rogers for a nothing and one count. Rogers, the third pitcher of the day for Carson Newman. Two innings, four hits, three runs, two earned. Two walks and a strikeout with a two-run double allowed. The 0-1. Newport steps out of the way of a pitch that splits the dish, but low, 1-1. One one. 59 pitches for Sierra Rogers, 34 in relief. Tusculum has brought the bats to life here in the nightcap with nine runs. 1-1. One one. Swing and a tap or foul off of the plate, 1-2. and two. Probably misspeak a little bit when I say bring the bats to life. Seven hits on the day, that's nice. Uh, but Tusculum has really taken advantage of free passes. Six walks and two errors allowing base runners to reach. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Rogers gets Newport to wave at it. And there's one away. And those eight free base runners for the Pioneers 
Tusculum brought all but three of them into score. Brings up Jimenez, swinging a foul tip back to the backstop, nothing in one. So credit the Pioneers, they've taken advantage of the free passes that they've gotten for Carson Newman. And then Ireland Cavanaugh has done fine work in the circle for Tusculum. He's given up four hits. Only run scored came on Macaulay Bailey's home run, the 01. Upstairs to Jimenez, one and one. Of the nine runs that Tusculum has scored here in the nightcap, seven came on something other than a hit. The 1 1. Down and in for a ball, 2 and 1 to Jimenez. You had two runs score on errors, two runs score on fielders' choices. Two runs score on bases loaded walks. And a run score on a wild pitch. The other two runs on Freischmidt's two RBI double. The 2 1. Downstairs to Jimenez, 3 and 1. Jimenez, 1 for 2. Strikeout, single, and a run scored and a walk. 3 and 1. And Rogers pitches inside for ball four at the waist. Seventh walk of the day by Carson Newman pitching. Does this come back to haunt the Eagles in the top of the fifth? At present standing, Carson Newman would not need to score in the bottom of the fifth to extend the game. The trail Tusculum. 9 to 2 here in the top of the fifth. Up comes Smeltzer. Pardon me, up comes Lazo. The pitch is low for a ball. 1 0. Smeltzer up after Lazo. Lazo is 0 for 1. Sacrifice, bases loaded, walk, error, and a run scored. 1 0. Rodgers delivers. Popped in the air, back it out of play. 1 and 1. One ball, one strike, one out. Jimenez on first. Now Carson Newman and Tusculum, the only game on the docket today between two league schools. But UVA Wise is in action against King over at Cavalier Field. That was a 3 p.m. first pitch for game one of the doubleheader. And in the fifth inning, it's scoreless between the Highland Cavaliers and Tornado. 1-1, Rogers pitches to Lazo. She pokes it in the air to left, drifting back goes Martin. She reaches up above her head to pull it in and retire Lazo. On the fly ball to left. So two out. And it brings up Smeltzer. Smeltzer's hitting 358. And is one for three here in the nightcap. Stands in as Rogers pitches, and Smeltzer swings and misses. Nothing in one the count. No balls, a strike, and two outs. Smeltzer, RBI fielder's choice, two of them to be exact, and a single up the middle. Pitch inside for a ball, one and one. So Smeltzer's been productive. On base every time she's come up and driven in two runs. Looking for a two-out knock. Tuslam's already got two of those today. The 1-1. Popped up, left side of the field. Martin racing toward the left field line, and the left fielder snares it to put away Smeltzer. So, Rodgers works around a one-out walk, and the Eagles offense find its footing. Vandergriff, Cameron, and Hughes to the plate. Bottom of the fifth inning. Eagles with nine outs to make up a seven-run differential. We are back to the pick after these messages. You're on the Eagle Sports Network. 
At InterDigital, we strive to be a leading provider of cutting-edge digital and marketing solutions. At InterDigital, we want to help our clients find success. Our team of technology gurus work together to ensure InterDigital continues to progress forward as technology advances. At InterDigital, we make technology work for you. Visit InterDigital.com for IT support, web development, virtual tours, graphic design, internet marketing, mobile app, and film production services. InterDigital, laser focused on your success. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home? team internet provider we're right here in jefferson city serving the people we know with our ultra fast ultra reliable fiber broadband network and we'd love to serve you learn more at trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824 go eagles 9-2 9-2 Tusculum leads it as we come to the bottom of the fifth inning with Mary Vandergriff leading things off for the Eagles. And Vandergriff swings at the first pitch from Kavanaugh and drills it down the hillside of Davis Street. Nothing and one off the foul ball. Pioneers with two in the first, four in the second, three in the fourth. Nine runs off of seven hits and no errors for Tusculum. With seven left, the 0-1. Vandergriff swings, stings it to right center. That's a base hit for Mary Vandergriff. Cut off by McBride in the alleyway. Vandergriff leads off the inning with the knock and for a third time in five innings, the Eagles get the leadoff batter aboard. Stops a slump at the plate for Vandergriff. She was one of her last 15 at the plate. Brings Sienna Cameron up. Single and a strikeout for Cameron. She takes low and away for a ball, 1-0. Nine runs for the Pioneers, two runs for the Eagles. The pitch. Cameron stings, right center field alleyway. That's down for extra bases. It's picked up by the center fielder, Newport. Cameron stands up on second. As the throw comes into the cutoff, Hodges, a double for Sienna Cameron. Vandergriff over to third. And the Eagles in business with two in scoring position for Macy Hughes. Hughes, one for two. Pop up to short, a two out double to left. Eagles down seven runs. First pitch to Hughes. Handcuffs her. Fouled back to the backstop. Nothing in one. Vandergriff single to right center. Cameron double to right center. Two in scoring position for the Eagles. Carson Newman looking for its first hit of game two with runners in scoring position. The 0-1. Hughes pops high into the air. Shallow center field. It's the center fielder Newport who makes the grab nearly even with the brown turf on the infield. And a sky-high pop-up gets Hughes for out number one. 9-2, Tusculum leading, bottom five. One out, two in scoring position for Macaulay Bailey. And if you're Julie Hubner, do you pitch to a woman who's only driven in 56 runs this season? Two home runs so far, and absolutely none. Bailey is not going to see a pitch that is not in the left-hand hitter's box. Ball two, high and outside. And so no chance here for Bailey to add to her 56 runs batted in on the season. High and outside, ball three. Pitch outside, ball four. So the old unintentional, intentional walk moves Bailey to first. Eagles have him loaded with one out for Brooke Matazowski. (laughs) 
Cavanaugh pitches, and Matizowski pounds the first pitch back up the box. This one is rolling to the warning track. Vandergriff is in. Cameron scores. Bailey's over to third. It's a two RBI double to the left center field alleyway for Brooke Matizowski. And the Eagles trim the deficit to five runs. It's nine to four in the bottom of the fifth inning. Brooke Matizowski, 32 runs driven in on the season now. As she pelts one back up the box. And in comes Kennedy Warder. Warder, a double to left center her last time up. Outfield back for Tusculum. One out, two in scoring position for the Eagles. Kavanaugh pitches. Not sure where that one missed. It was ball one, though. I had my eyes on the plate instead of the center field camera, but that felt like it was right down the middle at the knees. 1-0. Kavanaugh, the pitch. That's down and into water. 2-0. Two balls and no strikes. An out. Bailey and Matizowski in scoring position. 9-4. Tusculum leads by five runs in the bottom of the fifth. Kavanaugh. The 2-0. Warder looks at the strike at the handles. Curveball in the outer half, 2-1. and one. Eagles have scored twice here in the bottom of the fifth to make it a five-run game. The 2-1. Warder floats it in the air, deep left field. Grabbed by Smeltzer. Tagging from third and scoring is McCauley Bailey. Third run crosses in the inning, fifth of the game, and the Eagles make it a four-run deficit on a sacrifice fly to left field from Kennedy Warder. Matizowski moves over to third, and it's a 9-5 ball game for Hayden Dye. First pitch to die is outside for a ball 1 and 0 the pitch outside for a ball 2 and 0 two balls and no strikes two out Kavanaugh the dealing and Dye smokes this one to center field. Back to the wall is Newport. She reaches up and plucks it out of the sky to rob Dye of a home run. Okay. Cal and Newport, firm work in center field. Robs Dye of a dinger. But Carson Newman scores three times to, to get it back to a four-run tally. 9-5, Pioneers lead as we head to the sixth. Freischmidt, Watson, Hughes to the plate. We get back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at trilight.net or by calling 833 833- 847-0824. Go Eagles! At Aramark, this year we go back to our foundation. At Aramark, we are great food and great service with great guests. That is the Aramark way. From coffee at Maples to sandwiches in Stokely, Aramark is here to produce high-quality food for you. A foundation of fresh food, a foundation of speedy service, and a foundation that's built for you now and for the future. That is the Aramark way. Chloe Freischmidt leads off the top of the sixth inning for Tusculum, who holds a 9-5 lead over the Carson Newman Eagles. Sierra Rogers back to work in the circle, and she deals. First pitch to Freischmidt popped up behind home plate. Warder battling, and it drops. Didn't get her glove to it. 
But had it lined up, should have been an out, but it's strike one. Wind's blowing a fair bit. Kennedy Warder, who's normally so sure behind the plate, has had a couple of those that should be outs drop on her. Nothing in one. Rogers pitches the 0-1. Tipped foul into Warder's mitt, 0 and 2. And Carson Newman scored twice in the first inning on the McCauley Bailey home run. And three times in the bottom of the fifth. A Matazowski, two RBI double, and a Warder sacrifice fly. The 0 2. Change up, swing and a miss. Strike three. Warder completes the strikeout, throwing down to first base. And there's one away. One up, one down. Third strikeout of the nightcap for Sierra Rogers in her 13th of the doubleheader. One out for the catcher, Watts. One for three on the day. Watts stays even with the dish as Rogers works from the third base side. Swings at the first pitch and hits it to center. Cameron shuffling back behind the C in logo. She grips it to put away Watts. One pitch, out number two. Basically two away for the shortstop, Hughes. Hannah Hughes. Singled and scored a run in the second. Struck out swinging in the third. and Singled to left in the fourth and got stuck on second base. Rogers delivers to her. Swings and tips it foul into Warders. Mitt nothing and one. Tosklum scored twice in the first, four times in the second, and three times in the fourth inning. Here's the 0-1. Popped up, first base side, foul ground, and... Turning out of play, nothing in two. Pioneers of the nine runs scored today. Seven came off of plays that didn't feature a hit. Two fielders' choices, two errors, two bases loaded walks, and a wild pitch. The 0-2. Dribbled foul off of third. Hughes stays alive at nothing in two. The only two runs that didn't score off that did score off of a hit were the result of the two RBI double for Chloe Freischmidt to finish off the three-run fourth. Here's the 0-2. Swing a bouncing ball back up the box. Die fields behind the second base bag. Shortstop throws to first to get Hughes 6-3. to three. Second time today, Carson Newman pitching faces the minimum. Eagles keep the deficit to four runs. Carson Newman trails by four, headed to the bottom of the sixth. Holt, Martin, Vandergriff, lower third of the order, due up for Carson Newman. After this on the Eagles Sports Network. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never-frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa's cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From foot-long hot dogs to juicy steaks. Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. What is it that makes you powerful? It's not only having a voice, but knowing that it's heard loud and clear. We understand knowledge can change your life and that energy will continue to power it. And because you're part of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative... We're always listening because you're more than just a customer. You're a member. And what's more powerful than that? AEC, bringing the winning game plan to your team. Tusculum has made the call to the bullpen and brought in Emily Sappington in place of the starter, Ireland Cavanaugh. Sappington. The losing pitcher from game one, 8 and 11, with two saves, 117 strikeouts, and 98 and two thirds innings. Went five innings, gave up nine hits and five runs in the opening game of the doubleheader, and was shackled with the loss. So she's on in relief of Ireland Cavanaugh. 
And you can close the book on Kavanaugh. Five innings of work, seven hits, five runs all earned, two walks, a strikeout, and a wild pitch. Four of the seven hits that Kavanaugh gave up were doubles plus a home run. So five of the seven knocks Kavanaugh allowed were for extra bases. And Carmen Holt comes in against Emily Sampington. 0 for 2 for the game. 1 for 5 for the doubleheader. He goes down four runs, bottom of the sixth. Holt taking low and away for a ball 1 and 0. Carson Newman trailed by seven runs, 9 to 2 after four innings. Got three runs back in the bottom of the fifth. They're down four runs here in the bottom of the sixth. The 1 0. Holt looks at it low for a ball, 2 0. I believe Sappington is the only change. The MA stays at third. Still got Hughes at short. Lazo's still at first with Hodges at second. The pitch on the edge of the plate for a strike, two and one. And then in the outfield, Newport still playing deep in center. McBride in right, playing shallow in comparison. I think it is Smeltzer in left. I haven't gotten a look at the number yet, the 2 0. In the turf, Holt checked her swing on ball three. Appeal into the field, she did not offer. Three and one to Carmen Holt. And indeed it is Smeltzer in left. So no changes defensively for Tusculum other than Kavanaugh giving way to Sappington in the circle. Three one, Holt swings and flips it down the right field line, foul and out of play, that loads the count. So there might be a new catcher for Tusculum. So the second digit was a four instead of a six. We'll check on that. Three, two. Up and away, ball four. So Holt works the leadoff walk. I wonder if Freischmidt isn't catching now. But we haven't gotten a good clean look at the number behind the plate. Brings up Abby Martin. The pitch. Downstairs for a ball, 1-0. and One ball, no strikes. To Abby Martin and Catcher out to have a word with Sappington. Indeed, Freischmidt has come in to catch. The pitch outside for a ball, 2-0. Two balls and no strikes to Abby Martin, who's fouled out to first twice. The pitch. Check, swing, and a pitch up, ball three. Three balls, no strikes, nobody out. Holt on first base for Carson Newman after a leadoff walk. The 3-0. That's on the edge of the plate for a strike, three and one. Three balls, one strike to Abby Martin. Sappington deals. Outside for ball four. Back-to-back -back walks lead things off for the Eagles in the sixth. And that brings Mary Vandergriff up and Julie Hubner out of the dugout to have a chat with Emily Sappington and Chloe Freischmidt behind home plate. Looked like Hubner was set to make a substitution. Now Ireland Cavanaugh is heading back into the dugout. And that is the end of the line for Emily Sappington. So Cavanaugh is back in.
So Kavanaugh got to take off two batters before she comes back in and places Sappington. So Kavanaugh re-enters. And she'll get just a couple warm-up tosses in in place of Sappington. Brings up Mary Vandergriff. Swings at the first pitch and hits it foul off of Michael Graves' ankles. It's nothing and one. Nothing and one to Mary Vandergriff. Holt and Martin on base after two walks to start the inning. No one. Vandergriff looks at it outside for a ball, one and one. Marlon Cavanaugh, five innings, seven hits, five runs, all earned. Sappington sees two batters and walks them both. Eagles down four runs, bottom of the sixth, the one-one. Vandergriff nips foul off of the fencing of Tusculum's dugout on the third base side. And it's one and two. Freischmidt stays behind the plate for Kavanaugh. One, two. Vandergriff swings, line drive to right, but right at the right fielder McBride, who grips it to get Vandergriff, and there's one away. Flips back to the top of the order to Sienna Cameron, who's got a pair of multi hits to her name in this doubleheader. Two hits in game one, two hits in game two. Three straight two-hit performances for Vandergriff. She's up to 24 two-hit games in her career and 37 multi-hit efforts overall. All region outfielder stands in, lefty. As Kavanaugh dishes low for a ball, 1-0. 9-5, oh. Eagles trail, bottom of the sixth. One out, but Holt's on second and Martin's on first. Marcia Newman trying to rally from a seven-run deficit. Down five, four right now. The pitch. Cameron flips it foul onto Davis Street. And that's over the head of two fans and some lawn chairs who decidedly did not make a play on the ball. One and one. Kavanaugh pitches. Cameron slashes it. Left side of the infield, base hit. Left fielder Smeltzer bobbles for a moment, gathers it back in. Everybody goes station to station. It's a three-hit day for Sienna Cameron, her sixth of the season and 11th of her career. And the bases are loaded with one out for Macy Hughes. Tying run to the plate for the Eagles here in the bottom of the sixth. Ireland Cavanaugh. Gets the sign from Freischmidt and delivers. It's a change up. A tad high to Hughes, 1 0. 9 5, Tusculum leading, but the bases are loaded with one out. Two walks and a Cameron single. Have them loaded. The 1 0. Bailey takes a strike at the handles, 1 and 1. Pardon me, Hughes takes a strike at the handles. Hughes has popped up to short and to center. She's also banged a double to the wall and left. One for three here in the nightcap. Three for seven for the twin bill. 
Hughes wallops this pitch deep left center field. Goodbye, glow ball. Tie game. Macy Hughes, the grandest of slams. Nine, nine, as Hughes hammered her 22nd career home run to left. One out, base is empty for Macaulay Bailey. One, one pitch. And Hughes tanked it to left. Kavanaugh pitches down and into Bailey for ball one, one and oh. Does Kavanaugh give Bailey something to hit? She's walked five times in the doubleheader and homered twice. The one oh. Bailey. Bounces it left side of the infield. Backhand stab by the short stop. Hughes throw to first, sends Lazo split legged, but she keeps the foot on the bag to get Bailey six to three. So Bailey grounds out firm work for Hughes at short to make the play. And it sends up Brooke Matazowski. Kavanaugh pitches. A change up that Matazowski flips to the backstop. Nothing in one. 9-9 nine, nine ball game. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning, the Eagles have scored seven unanswered to tie this one up at nine runs apiece. After trailing 9-2 in the fourth, the pitch. Low for a ball. It's one and one. One ball, one strike, two outs. Base is empty. Ireland pitches. Matazowski swings and misses. It's one and two. We see Hughes a grand slam home run. 22nd of her career. She's tied with Elena Siebert, the ninth all-time in school history with that blast. The one two is in the turf, but Matazowski hacks it foul off of third. Should have been ball two instead. Count holds it a ball and two strikes. Two out, base is empty. Macy Hughes with a big blast to pull the Eagles even at nine runs apiece. Here's the one two. Matazowski swings, sends it to center. Routine for Newport, who settles under it to the left of the CN logo. And that's the inning. But a Macy Hughes grand slam to left field has made this a brand new ball game. It's a 9 9 contest. Kavanaugh, Hodges, and Newport. To the plate for the Pioneers in the top of the seventh inning. Back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. Domino's Pizza in Jefferson City and Morristown wants to help feed your business. When you're hungry at lunch, show your business card at Domino's in Jefferson City and Morristown when you make your purchase for pickup or delivery to get 25% off the entire order. That's 25% off your order at Domino's in Jeff City and Morristown when you show your business card. Call 865-471-6700 to get a pizza. Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Well, we've got ourselves a brand new ball game in the top of the seventh inning after the Eagles trail at 9-2 after four. It's now a 9-9 ball game. Seven unanswered by the Eagles and Kavanaugh, Hodges, and Newport to go to work for the Pioneers in the top of the seventh against Sierra Rodgers. 
Rogers winds and delivers the first pitch to Kavanaugh. Popped up right side of the infield. Second baseman Holt grips it and grabs it to retire Kavanaugh off of one pitch. One pitch, one out, the nine hole hitting. Hodges comes up. Hodges is one for two. Single, walk, fly out to left. Right-hander stands in against Rodgers in a 9-9 game. Base is empty, one out, top seven. The pitch in the turf for a ball, 1-0. and oh. One ball, no strikes, one out. Should Carson Newman pull off this comeback, it will be the largest deficit overcome in school history. The 1-0 oh. was low, flipped into the air, in right field, Vandergriff lays out and snow cones it in right. Spectacular work by Mary Vandergriff to Rob Hodges of a bloop single down the right field line. Two away. Line up back to the top of the order for Newport. Conference's leader in double stands in as Rogers delivers. Down and in for a ball 1-0. Newport 0 for 2. Two walks, one of which drove in a run. A line out to left and a strikeout. She scored two runs. Rogers. Winds and delivers the 1-0. Popped foul back and out of play. It's 1-1. One, one. one ball, one strike, two out. 9-9 nine, nine ball game, top of the seventh inning. Tusculum jumped out to a 9-2 lead, but the Eagles have scored seven unanswered. To tie this up at nine apiece, the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss, strike two. Newport Tardy on the rise ball. One ball and two strikes. Rogers. Here comes the one two. That might have as well have been swinging bunt. It's off of Rogers' glove. Holt grabs it at second and throws to first to complete a one four three put out. Rogers faces the minimum, and the Eagles will have an opportunity to walk it off in the bottom of the seventh. Warder, die, and Holt to the plate. When we come back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. I get my power from my co-op so I can put my energy into my family. Into waking up the neighborhood. Latte for Christine. I get my power from the co-op so I can put my energy into planting seeds for a brighter future. Touchstone Energy Cooperatives power to your community for your community so your energy can go into the things that matter most to you. My 69 Camaro. Who powers you? AEC, the right call for your energy needs. Let us help you score success. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never-frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa's cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From footlong hot dogs to juicy steaks. Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. We have come to the bottom of the seventh inning. A 9-9 ball game between Carson Newman and Tusculum. Eagles have scored seven unanswered to get into this position. And Kennedy Warder leads things off. Warder, line out to third, double down the left field line, sacrifice fly to left. First pitch she gets, frozen rope into the glove of the shortstop Hughes. Hard hit ball grabbed by Hughes, and there's one away. Warder, hit it well. Hughes played it perfectly at short. One out for Hayden Die. Die, hitless. You're in the nightcap. 0 for 3 after a 2 for 3 day in game 1. First pitch outside for a ball. It's 1 0. But it's not like she hasn't hit the ball hard. She's been robbed of home runs twice. 
at the warning track. Once by Smeltzer and left, once by Newport and center. The pitch, die, sky high pop up. Left side of the field, it's in foul ground and the shortstop Hughes snags it to put away die. Quickly two away for Carmen Holt. Holtz 0 for 2 in the night cap. Whitey stands in in a 9-9 ball game. Bottom seven. Walked her last time up, but has flied out to left and popped up to short. Kavanaugh, first pitch. Holt takes down and in for a ball, 1-0. Kavanaugh has... Pitch six and two thirds innings, but doesn't have the complete game. Emily Sappington walked two in a very brief relief appearance before giving back way to Kavanaugh, who dishes outside to Holt two and zero. Oh. Bases empty for the Eagles. Bottom seven. Nine nine ball game. Kavanaugh set for the two zero, oh and she pitches. Upstairs, Holt hacks at it, skies it down the left field line. It's in foul ground, and the shortstop, Hughes, drops it. That will go down as an E6 on Hughes. Game should be over. E6, drop, foul ball. We got one of those each way today. And the game extends for Carmen Holt. Two and one, the pitch. That's a strike at the belt, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Nine-nine ball game, bottom seven. Bases empty for the Eagles. We should be in extra innings. The pitch, upstairs, Holt whacks it. Foul off of third. Do it again at two and two. Count should be loaded up, but Carmen Holt Tomahawking. Beautiful day here on the banks of Mossy Creek. Temperatures in the mid 70s. Wind blowing out to center field. 2 2 pitch. Kavanaugh delivers. It's a change up that Holt bounces to Hughes at short. Throw to first. Not in time. Holt legs out the infield single. Tenth hit of the day for Carson Newman. And the inning extended, and Holt absolutely beat the throw to first. Brings up Abby Martin. She's 0 for 2. Two foul outs and a walk. Kavanaugh pitches to her, and Martin takes the first pitch low for a ball, 1-0. 110 pitches for Ireland Kavanaugh, 69 for strikes. Kavanaugh, the 1-0. Martin looks at it outside for a ball, 2-0. Two, two balls, no strikes, two outs. And Carson Newman put together a two-out rally to win it in regulation. Kavanaugh gets the sign in from the dugout. The 2-0 pitch. Martin takes the strike at the knees, 2-1. Two, two balls, one strike, two outs in a game that is two hours and 17 minutes old. Bottom seven, two out, runner on first for the Eagles. Tie game, the 2-1. Martin checks her swing and a pitch up and in, ball three. Three balls, one strike, two outs. Holt does have speed at first. Outfield back, the 3-1. Martin jammed up, pops it in the air, shallow right center field. The second baseman hodges into the outfield turf, and she grips it to put away Martin. So, to extras we go. Tusculum, one and one in extra inning games this season. Carson Newman, 0 oh and 1. Jimenez, Lazo, Smeltzer to the plate for the Pioneers. 9 9 ball game. We get back after this on the Eagles Sports Network. We select our insurance companies the same way you do, very carefully. When you work with us, you can count on receiving fast, courteous, and professional service and 
quality protection through auto owners insurance. For a no problem approach for your life, home, car, and business insurance needs, ask us about the no problem company, Auto Owners Insurance. Call Bible Insurance Agency at 423-586-4320 or go by 1600 East Andrew Johnson Highway in Morristown. Serving the Lakeway area's insurance needs since 1931. At InterDigital, we strive to be a leading provider of cutting-edge digital and marketing solutions. At InterDigital, we want to help our clients find success. Our team of technology gurus work together to ensure InterDigital continues to progress forward as technology advances. At InterDigital, we make technology work for you. Visit InterDigital.com for IT support, web development, virtual tours, graphic design, internet marketing, mobile app, and film production services. InterDigital, laser focused on your success. Well, we head to extra innings. Gray. Second time in as many home double headers for Carson Newman. The Eagles are playing some bonus softball. They lost 10 to 6 to Lincoln Memorial in eight innings in their last game here at the Vic. Prior to these twin this twin bill with Tusculum. Pioneers one for one. Or one and one, pardon me, in extra innings. International rule runner is Newport. She's placed on second. Him and I leads off the inning. Squaring to bunt, shoots it in the air. Hughes charges in and grabs it on a line. No double play. Cameron had to come all the way in from center to cover second. But it's a line drive put out on a failed bunt attempt by Jimenez. And there's one away for Haley Lazo. Top of the eighth inning, 9-9 ball game. Lazo stands in as Rogers pitches. Takes low for a ball, 1-0. Sierra Rogers, that was her 201st pitch of this doubleheader. Relief effort here in the nightcap. She and Ireland Cavanaugh are the pitchers of record. Lazo's 0 for 2, 1 0. Upstairs for a ball, 2 0. Lazo, sacrifice bunt, bases loaded walk, E6, and a fly out to left. 0 for 2 through all of that. 88, 90 pitches now for Sierra Rogers here in the nightcap. The 2-0. Hit foul over the Tusculum dugout, third base side, 2-1. 9-9 to score, top of the eighth inning. Tusculum led 9-2 after the top of the fifth inning. Eagles have responded with seven unanswered to force extras. Rogers deals the 2-1. Line drive, left center field. That's going to score a run. It rolls all the way to the wall. Latso plates Newport as she motors into second with a one-out double. And the Pioneers have a 10-9 lead in the top of the eighth inning. Latso, 2-0 pitch, drove it to the left center field alleyway. And the Pioneers back on top, stopping that string of seven consecutive Scored by Carson Newman. That brings up Smeltzer. Smeltzer has driven in two. Those came on fielder's choices. She also has a single and a fly out. One out, runner in scoring position. The pitch. Hit in the air to right. Vandergrift takes a circuitous route. It's back to the wall. It's out of the park. Smeltzer goes yard for the sixth time this season she pulls it to right and stretches Tusculum's lead to 12 to 9 Schmelzer finds a pitch and pokes it out of the park this brings up Freischmidt Bases empty, three across for Tusculum. Rogers pitches, and Freischmidt fouls it back and out of play, nothing and one. So the Pioneers have pounced here in the top of the eighth. Hadn't scored in three runs, but after the failed sacrifice, bunt line back to Hughes at first. You go double and a dinger. Wonder how much 
Sierra Rogers has left in the tank. Through 112 pitches in game one, she's at 94 here in the nightcap. The 0-1. High for a ball, one and one to Freischmidt. So Carson Newman will need to score three times in the bottom of the eight, at the very least, to extend the game. Rodgers gets the sign from Warder. Here's the 1-1. Take it inside for a ball, two and one. Two balls, one strike, one out. Base is empty for Tuscal. A lazo double to left center, a smeltzer homer to right. Rodgers rolls the ball against her right hip. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Line drive, foul off the facing of the bullpen on the left field line, 2-2. Two and two. 12 runs for Tusculum off of nine hits and an error. They've left seven. Nine runs off of ten hits, four errors for Carson Newman. And the Eagles have left five. Rodgers set for the 2-2. And she pitches. That misses in for ball three. Carson Newman's dugout thought it was a strikeout looking. Instead, the at-bat continues for Freischmidt, who's been aboard twice here in the nightcap, once on an air and once on a two-RBI double. One out, base is empty. 3-2. Looped foul off of the facing of Tusculum's dugout. Do it again at three and two. Three runs across here in the top of the eighth inning for Tusculum. A 12-9 lead for the Pioneers in extra innings. The three-two. Down and in, ball four. Freischmidt works the base on balls. And the inning continues for now the designated player, Watts. Now batting number 26, Madison Watts. Once you're going to have a pinch runner at first base in place of Freischmidt. And so, coming in to run is Italia Kyle. Now running at first base, number 10, Italia Kyle. So Kyle on first. Watts at the plate, and she's one and four. Pioneers mentioned it one and one in extra innings games. First pitch to Watts, taken low for a ball, one and zero. Oh. They won two to one in eight innings against Hillsdale back on February 10th. The loss came, the loss came on March 26th in the 4-3 decision in game one of a doubleheader against Wingate in eight innings. One zero. Oh. Taken for a strike, one and one. Sierra Rogers, 213 pitches now. She started game one, came in relief in game two, and has thrown five and a third innings, given up six hits and six runs, four earned. Rogers, the one one. Hit in the air to center. Cameron shuffling in, and routine for the Eagles center fielder to put away Watts, two away. And it brings up the shortstop, Hughes. Tosclum has scored thrice here in the top of the eighth inning. An RBI double for Lazo, a two-run home run from Smeltzer. To grab a 12-9 lead over Carson Newman in extra innings. Anna Hughes is two for four today. Pair of singles, a strikeout, and a ground out. First pitch to her is hit foul back and out of play, nothing in one. 12-9. Tusculum leading. Eagles scored seven unanswered between the fifth and sixth innings to force extras after trailing 9-2 after four. Rodgers. Wheels and deals the 0-1. It's in there for a strike and uses behind the count at nothing and two. If you're paying attention to Carson Newman's lineup, Eagles do have the top of the order due up. Cameron, Hughes, and Bailey. Here's the 0-2. Taken outside. Hughes doesn't chase. It's one and two. One ball, two strikes to Hughes. 
A 12-9 lead for Tusculum here in the top of the eighth inning. Two out. And a pinch running Kyle on first. A 1-2. Swing and a bouncing ball to short. Die fields, throw to first on target Hughes, and that's that gets Hughes. So a 6-3 put out finishes the inning. But a Lazo RBI double, a two-run home run from Smeltzer. And that means the Eagles need to score three times to extend the game. We'll see if Carson Newman has it in him. Top of the order, due up for the Eagles when we come back. Pardon me, Vandergriff, Cameron and Hughes, 9-1-2 due up when we get back after this on the Eagles Sports Network. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! Vandergriff Cameron Hughes scheduled to appear for Carson Newman here in the bottom of the eighth inning, trailing 12-9 to Tusculum to start extras as Vandergriff stings the first pitch she, she gets to the left fielder Smeltzer who bobbles. Martin scores, and it's a leadoff base hit for Mary Vandergriff and an E7 on Smeltzer and left. So a single for Vandergriff. She moves to second on the air. And Carson Newman has brought the first run in, 12-10. Brings up Sienna Cameron. 12-10, Eagles down bottom of the eighth inning. Good start for Mary Vandergriff. The pitch, swing and a miss by Sienna Cameron. And it's nothing in one. No balls, one strike. To the leadoff batter, Cameron, who's working on her 11th career three-hit day. She's had four hits twice in her career, both this season against Shorter and Newberry. Pitch misses for a ball, one and one. One ball, one strike. Cameron represents the tying run in this game. A leadoff single for Mary Grit Vandergriff. And she takes second base on the E7 by Smeltzer. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Vandergriff chops it over the head of the third baseman, Jimenez. Foul, one and two. One ball, two strikes. Eagles down 12-10, bottom of the eighth inning. Need to score twice more to extend this game, three more times to end it in walk-off fashion. Kavanaugh pitches, a changeup. Cameron flicks it, right center field. That's down for a base hit. Stop sign held up. Vandergriff kept to third. Cameron stands on first. She's got a single to right center. And there's runners on the corners for Macy Hughes. Cameron, her third career four hit day. And it brings up the woman who tied this game in the bottom of the sixth inning. Hughes, a grand slam home run her last time up. Kavanaugh pitches. It's in the turf for Hughes, 1-0. and Carson Newman has to love where it is in the order. After Hughes, you get McCauley, Bailey, and Brooke Matazowski. Now those are two pretty hefty run producers there. Hughes no slouch either. The 39 driven in. The pitch foul to the backstop, 1-1. One and one. one ball, one strike. Nobody out. The Eagles have the tie and run on base here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Trey leaning extras 12 to 10. Kavanaugh checks her wrist protector and twirls up the 1 1. Hughes looks at a pitch inside for a ball, 2 and 1. 
Two balls, one strike, nobody out. Vandergriff on third, Cameron on first. Here's the 2 1. Hughes watches it outside for a ball, three and one. Three balls, one strike, nobody out. 12 10 Tusculum, bottom eight. Kavanaugh winds and delivers the 3 1. Hughes smacks it down the left field line. It's in foul ground and it's out of play on top of the cages. That loads the count on Macy Hughes at three and two. Hughes with a pair of extra base hits here in the nightcap and a pair of pop-ups. She's driven in seven through the doubleheader. Payoff pitch. Hughes hacks it foul off of first, twisting out of play to keep the count full. Three balls and two strikes to Macy Hughes. Eagles looking for a timely hit here in the bottom of the eighth inning. A double and a dinger gave Tusculum a 12-9 lead in the top of the eighth. Eagles have answered with an RBI single from Mary Vandergriff. Now runners on the corners, nobody out for Macy Hughes in the bottom of the eighth. Kavanaugh, the payoff pitch. Hughes swings, hard hit, smash back up the box, base hit. Cameron charging around second. She slides in head first to third. Vandergriff scores standing, and the tying run is 60 feet away. It's 12 to 11 after Hughes, fifth RBI of game two. Runners on the corners, still nobody out for the nation's now leader in RBI in Macaulay Bailey. And she is not going to see a pitch. Bailey's actually, I think, her toe was on the plate that last pitch. Second base is empty for Bailey. The pitch, high outside, ball two. 2-0 to Macaulay Bailey. So the bases will be loaded with nobody out. High and outside, ball three. And Bailey set to walk for a third time here in the nightcap. A sixth time in the doubleheader. 3-0. Yeah, high and outside. Ball four. Hughes off to second. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Eagles down a run for Brooke Matizowski. Two runs across here in the bottom of the eighth inning. And now Tusculum assistant coach Eric Krenz is out from the dugout to have a chat with the Pioneer infield and how Tusculum wants to play this. Carson Newman has brought in a pinch runner. Brooke Taylor is in to run for Macy Hughes at second base. So the Eagles bring in the track star. Macy Hughes has pretty good speed. And she would account for the winning run if the Eagles can drive her in. You got good speed at third in Cameron. And now Taylor at second base, pinch running for Hughes. Meeting in the circle over. It's Brooke Matizowski to the plate. Nobody out, bases loaded. Down a run here in the bottom of the eighth. Carson Newman also pinch running for Macaulay Bailey at first base. That's Skyler Jacob. Great, and unless it's a home run, Jacob doesn't matter as much, save for the fact that you put more speed at first base to probably to prevent a potential double play ball. Infield is in for Tusculum, trying to protect a one-run lead in the bottom of the eighth inning. Bases loaded, nobody out for Matizowski. One for four. A fly ball ties the game. The pitch hit foul, backing out of play, nothing in one. 12-11, Tusculum leading. High drama here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Eagles trailed by three runs at the start of this bottom half of the inning. Down a run now. Kavanaugh, the 0-1. Matizowski seals it, sees it sail outside for a ball. It's one and one. One ball, one strike to Matizowski. She's driven in two runs already today with a double to left. Outfield way back for the Pioneers. The 1-1. One, one. 
Matizowski swings, hits it in the air to center field. Newport tracking to the alleyway, settles under it, grabs it. Cameron tagging and scoring, standing, all square, 12 apiece. Taylor tagged from second and took third. It's a sacrifice fly into right center field from Brooke Matizowski. Jacob held tight at first base. Cameron scored. And the Eagles have leveled it at 12 apiece in the bottom of the eighth inning. And now up comes Kennedy Warder. Well, Chloe Freischmidt wants to talk things over with Ireland Kavanaugh. And again, just one out on the board. A fly ball gives an opportunity for Taylor to tag and score from third. 12-12 ball game, bottom of the eighth inning. RBI singles for Mary Vandergriff and Macy Hughes. A sacrifice fly from Brooke Matizowski. And we are all square at 12 runs apiece in the bottom of the eighth inning. Kavanaugh to go to work against Kennedy Warder, and they are going to issue her a free pass. First pitch was high and outside for a ball. A pitch out for Warder. Up and away, ball two. Two and oh. Second base open. So this will put a force at every bag. Up and away again, ball three. And Kavanaugh will issue the unintentional, intentional walk to Warder. Ball four. So Skyler Jacob moves to second, Warder's at first, and Taylor over at third for Hayden Dye. Dye is 0 for 4 here in the nightcap. A fly ball to the outfield likely does the job for Dye. And she has been robbed of two home runs in this game. Bases loaded, one out, 12-12 ball game. Kavanaugh pitches, and Dye takes a strike at the thighs, nothing in one. 12-12, bottom of the eighth inning. Tusculum scored three times in the top of the eighth. A double and a dinger. Eagles have two RBI singles and a sack fly, the 0-1. Dye flips it foul, backing out of play, nothing in two. After die, you get Carmen Holt, who's one for three. If Kavanaugh can retire, die. Kavanaugh gets the sign from Julie Hugner. Here's the 0-2 pitch. It's a changeup. Die flips it shallow right field. It's snagged by McBride. Taylor is tagging. The throw is offline. Taylor scores. Ball game over. Eagles win. Back to back sack flies. And Carson Newman wins it 13 to 12. Biggest comeback in school history. Eagles rally from down seven runs and walk it off with back-to-back -back sack flies from Brooke Matizowski and Hayden Dye. What a dandy of a contest for Carson Newman. Eagles sweep the doubleheader with a 13-12 win in the nightcap. Carson Newman improves to 27-9 on the season, 12-6 in conference play, while the Pioneers fall to 20-23 and 6-14 and and in South Atlantic Conference play. For our entire crew, Director Danny Uzork, replay operator Ian Johnson, our camera crew, Manon Campagner, Katie Denton, Molly Buckowitz, and Luke Brennigan, I'm Adam Cavalier. Thanks for joining us. Once again, the Eagles pull out the brooms and sweep the Pioneers. 13-12, the final in the nightcap. We'll talk to you on Saturday when the Eagles host Emory and Henry at 1 p.m. Until then, have a pleasant rest of your Tuesday. Good night, everybody.